forever changed the world. The terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. The Liborium student section has chosen to symbolize this event by wearing red, white, and blue tonight to pay tribute to the victims of those attacks and to honor our first responders and military personnel. For tonight's game, all first responders, active military, and veterans receive free admission as a small token of thanks for all they do. Before our national anthem, please join us in a moment of silence in remembrance of the victims and the events of September 11th. Thank you. Now please remain standing and welcome to the podium, Lake Orion High School Director of Bands, Michael Steele, as he leads the Dragon Marching Band in the Star Spangled Banner. Just before kickoff, it's Lake Orion, Oxford on a beautiful Friday night at Dragon Stadium. And Chris, you've got the keys to the game for tonight. I got the There's keys. There's my keys. Here's the keys to the game. Number one, establish the ground game. Lake Orion's got to have more balance. Last week in time of possession, Southville A&T had the ball for over 31 minutes of that game. Lake Orion only had 83 yards on the ground. 36 plays to Lake Orion. 
to 59 for Southfield a &T. Next man up right now, number two. Depth is a key when key players are out, and Lake Orion's got key players out tonight, which we'll talk about. And number three, focus on the game, focus on each play. Not all the hype that is typically Lake Orion and Oxford. Dragons will get the ball first. They'll be moving, moving right to left across your television. Stephen Brown is back deep. And number six, Jay Cady, will kick off for Oxford. Referee blows his whistle. We're underway. High end over end kick into the end zone. Ball come out. It'll be first and ten for the Dragons. Our officiating crew tonight, it's a Genesee County crew. Wally Rose is the referee. Chris Curtis is the head linesman. Matt McLaughlin is the line judge. Doug Porapot is the umpire. Mike McLaughlin is the back judge. Brandon Robertson is the side judge. And Noah McLaughlin is the field judge, as we said. It is a Genesee County crew. Dragons comes out, come out first and 10 from the 20. Kyler from the gun, one wide out, tight to the left. Double wing. And we have an offside penalty already. It'll be first and five. That defensive tackle right over the right over the nose. I mean, the ball's right there in front of her. You got to watch that ball. But I think it's the the excitement, the the ability to make that first hit, want the want to make that first hit, that and the hard count by Kyler Carson, take five yards whenever you can get it. That's it. Two wings now motion this side, toss back. Stephen Brown trying to get outside. He's brought down at the 25 for no gain. Your first quarter of action is underwritten by Paul's Carpet Shine. The privately owned and operated company provides residential and cleaning services for the Orion area. For more information, give them a call at 248-568-9264 or visit their website at paulscarpetshine.com. Same lineup. Handoff up the middle. Billy Robertson on the carry. He's up near the 30. It'll be third down and one for the Dragons. Chris, nothing fancy there, just right up the gut. Nothing, no, nothing fancy. Got four yards on the carry. Roberson comes into tonight's game, leading the team in rushing with 190 yards on the ground. 7.9 yards a carry. And I think we're going, I think Oxford jumped again. Well, it's interesting. The ball was snapped. Kyler Carson got the ball, but maybe it was snapped on the movement of the Oxford defensive line. The officials will sort it all out. And as an offensive lineman, if you see somebody jump, yeah, go ahead and snap the ball. That'll back it up to the 24-yard line, make it third down and six. You can, there's jitters already on each side of the ball. Yeah. One penalty to each side. They, remember, they haven't played in two years. Didn't play last That's year. Right. So it's been a, a while since these two teams have faced off on Dorian the gridiron. Hill split left. Now they're going to call a procedure call against the Dragons. C.J. Witt went in motion, and we saw it before, Chris, where the back goes out in motion and he turns and he jogs backward parallel to the line. And I don't know how they called that. Naz Lardell sets up in a wing right. C.J. Witt in motion, low snap. Out to Lardell, he's to the 23. And it'll be fourth down for the Dragons. Zach Jones comes out to punt it away. And number 15, Dom Cassis, is back deep for the Wildcats. Three, 
High snap. Gets it down. Nice high kick. Fair catch. Called for. Drop. Dragons got it. Eric P. Fell on it. He came in in a hurry. He had to call for a fair catch. Well, you got to catch the ball. You do. And, and you, you got to keep those elbows together. And th that ball hit off the front of his fingers and dropped right there. And P is right there to pick it up. Great uh, turn of events here early on in the first quarter. So the Dragons get it back first and 10 at the Oxford 39-yard line. Double wing, single set in the backfield. Now motion this side. Handoff up the middle goes nowhere. Roberson got trapped for a two yard loss. Yeah, Gavin Green, number 74, and Sal Vaccaro, number 20, are in there on the stop. They got penetration real quick, and, and uh, Roberson had nowhere to go. You can see Oxford's defensive game plan. It's going to be attack the line. So second and 12. The, that's probably going to be another procedure call. The center is slow snapping the ball. Tyler called for the ball. The offensive line broke their stance and the ball hadn't been snapped yet. Jonah fixes the center. Three wides right. Kyler back to throw, looks, throws over the head of C.J. Witt, and it'll be third down. It's third and 17. Ball spotted on the 46. Witt's wide open in the flat, but to just ball sail a little bit high. Pressure from number 56, who we don't have on our roster, from Oxford. No, we do not. So now we have two wide receivers. Andre Majerian is in a slot right. Kyler back. Got pressure, got a scramble. Goes down. And the ball's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Carson felt the pressure and backside Logan Wilmot was in there and was able to get the ball off as he's being tackled. Uh, nice smart play by Carson, Kyler Carson. So it's fourth and 17. Zach Jones sets up on the 40. Number 15, who I do not have on my roster, but that's okay because the kick goes out of bounds at the 15-yard line where Oxford will take over first and, first and 10. Today's game is a copyrighted presentation of Lake Orion High School's Dragon Broadcasting Program and Orion Neighborhood Television. Last school year, the LOHS Broadcast Program was awarded the title of Best Overall Program in the Country. We brought you over 80 live sporting events and we plan to match that again this year. Plus, you can catch our award-winning daily live newscast, ON or L O A M. Tune in on dragonbroadcasting.org. Okay, first and ten for the Wildcats from the 13. Brady Carpenter is the quarterback. Hands off off the left side for a, about a yard. Ball went to Salva Caro, number 20. Interesting. We've done Lake Gorian Oxford games many, many years, Doug, and, and what we're going to see offensively tonight is completely different what we've seen uh, in all those years prior to tonight. I was talking with Coach Line about that. We'll get to that after this play. 
Carpenter rolling. Got pressure. Scrambles out of it. He's going up the right side. Got a first down and taken off out of bounds late, and a flag goes down. Yeah, for years, we were used to the philosophy of Coach Raleigh, which was pound the ball. And talking with Coach Line, of course, he had a 10-year career in the NFL. And I said, what did you take? What parts of your offense did you take? He said, I took some from SMU. I took some from the Minnesota Vikings. I had Sean Payton as a head coach in New Orleans. That's pretty good coaching tree. And he said, what I've done is kind of got a combination of everything that worked really well for us. And I think one of the challenges he had last year moving into you know, this year is implementing that new system with the Oxford, uh, Oxford football team and, and the program wide, right? And so um, once they start to get the system down, and they've got some athletes and they've played well, even though they're 0-3, they've played uh, some very tough teams to this point in time. Carpenter under center, tossed back. On the back side, flag down. Toss back to number 42, Tate Meyer. Junior running back. We do have a flag down. Usually it's in the area of a, area of a hold, which is exactly what it is. Hold on number two, Jackson Keene. That'll back him up 10 yards. So It'll make it. They'll repeat first down. It'll be first and 20 from the 33-yard line. We're not even five minutes into this ball game, and we have six penalties total. Yeah. Wide out set up on wings both sides. Carpenter looks, throws complete to number 14, Brody Moore, sophomore wide receiver. Just a little pitch and catch between Carpenter and Moore. Those defensive backs, Lake Orion, are sitting off a little bit. Just a little run, run a little out. Uh, get what you can on first and 20. There's not a lot of plays in the playbook for first and 20. Get a little bit back at a time. Eight yards there on that, that play. So second and 12. Two wide outs. Two wings set up on the left side. Toss back. Number two, Jackson Keen brought down by 22, C.J. Witt for a loss. C.J. did a great job of just sh shedding his block, getting off and making the play. Well done, well executed by number 22, C.J. Witt. Makes it third and 14. Ball spotted just over the 39-yard line. 6.40 to go here in the first. We've got no score. I mentioned this in the pregame. Lake Orion has got to do a better job of getting off the field on third down. Two wide outs, two backs in the backfield. Carpenter looks, throws, complete. Number seven, Mitch Viviano. And Chris, he just went to the sticks and made a left. Yeah, he just knew what to do. A little dig route from his, his, his tight end spot there and and Carpenter found him over the middle. It wasn't a, a pretty looking ball, but it got there, it was effective, and they're into Lake Orion territory, first down. Here you see the... A little late, but came over right in front of Coach Line. Two backs in the backfield in an I formation. Motion far side. Handoff, ball's on the ground. Recovered by Oxford and smothered by Evan Rawlings. That'll be about a two yard loss. You know, this is a, this is a football game, but that was a like Sunday hop right there. That ball hit the ground, bounced back it up. Was. And uh, luckily for, for Oxford in that case, they were able to get it back. Second down and 12 from the Lake Orion 47. Oxford taking a lot of time getting the play in. One wide out left, motion to the far side. Hand off. 
Coming around the far side, number 20. Salva, Salva Caro. I tell you what, there was a great block by Logan Wilmot on CJ Witt that time. CJ thought he was being held, but that's what sprung the, 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 the carry down to the 20 yard line was that block by Wilmot. And he showed, and Vaccaro showed some speed getting out and getting around the corner. So first and 10 from the 20. Here you see it right here, number 22, CJ Witt being blocked and maybe it's it's they just off a of camera you're right the, the, he, got he the was being held the back of the jersey yes he did my carol again and he smothered this time for no gain <laughs> judah kenny <laughs> and rawlings on the tackle I did not catch what the official referee Wally Rose said. Regardless, it's second and ten. Just looked at single back in the backfield, twins left, single wide right. Carpenter rolling out. Looking, now he's going to tuck it in and run. And he is down short of the first down, I believe. Let's see where they mark it. C.J. Witt on the hit, not out of bounds. But Carpenter had all the time in the world to do whatever. And good coverage downfield because Carp Carpenter couldn't find anybody. But that's one thing Lake Orion's going to have to improve upon. They've got to get to Carpenter when he's dropping back like that. They can't allow him to get outside the tackles and run. He's too athletic of a quarterback. Third and one for the Wildcats. They set up... Wide outs each side, single back in the backfield, two tight ends. Carpenter fakes, looks, throws, complete. Touchdown, Oxford. Number 45, Logan Wilmot. And Chris, he looked like he caught that ball with his fingertips and drew it into his body as he was crossing the goal line. He catches the front half of the ball, he catches the middle of the ball, he catches the back half, it doesn't matter as long as it's secured and yep. it crosses that plane. Touchdown, Oxford. Number six, Number six, Jay Cady, in for the extra point. Brody Moore is the holder. Ball is down, kick is up. And the kick is good. 4.01 to go here in the first. It's 7-0 Oxford. Good play action bootleg. Nice fake. Carpenter's wide open. Here's Wilmot. On the, you're right. He caught the back half of the ball. Caught the back half of the ball. Tucked it into his uh, thigh and just pulled it up. Hey, thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School Sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the Lake Orion High School program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account. Get started at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. Orion Neighborhood Television thanks our student crews for their hard work and dedication to bring Dragon Sports to the world. Kickoff high, deep in the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. Dragons will take over first and 10. So Lake Orion had technically had two drives. One, they punted. Oxford muffed the punt. Lake Orion had the ball at the 39 of Oxford. Couldn't do anything with it. Oxford, 87-yard drive right there on their first on their first possession. Uh, puts them up 7-0. And as always, I was going to chart plays, and I have completely neglected that. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you, Doug. Okay, you got me covered. Yep. All right. 
First and 10 for the Dragons. Four wide, double wide, double slot. Single back in the backfield is Roberson. Kyler looks, rolls. A intended for Jack Wellman. He was covered on the sideline. And I didn't think Kyler had that much pressure that he felt he had to roll. So second and 10. Carson coming into tonight, 20 of 39 for 320 yards, two touchdowns and an interception, a little over 51% completion percentage. Ray Payne is lined up in a slot left. Dorian Hill split wide left. Kyler on the keeper. Gets over the 20. And that's his helmet came out. He's got to come out for a play. So Connor McCartan comes in at quarterback. Anytime a player's headgear comes out, he's got to come out of the game for one play. And that's what Kyler did there. So Connor from the gun. Roberson's alongside of him. Low snap. Looks. Throws this side just over through Ray Payne, who was open. He was. He was open. He got the separation. Ball just thrown a little bit long. He had time back to, there to throw. Just a little long. So it'll be fourth and eight. And Zach Jones comes in again to punt. It's fourth down and eight. Number 15, who we do not have on our roster, is back deep. Stephen Brown comes in at the last minute. Low end over end kick. And we have a flag down at the 20 yard line. Yeah, Lake Orion was one person short. They only had 10 players on the field. They, Joseph Bruno just runs on right now, but. Which, uh, which meant before Stephen Brown ran in, they were doing their punt coverage with nine. But wait a second. When Stephen Brown comes off. My apologies, I miscounted from up here. Better kick end over end. Takes a high bounce and down at the Oxford 48 by Eric Pegg. So the Wildcats will take over first and 10, 313 left to go in the first. And Larry Buss and the crew at Jets Pizza, located at 1091 South Lapeer Road have been a proud supporter of Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragons Athletics since 2009. Jets supplies catering for cast and crew. Thank you, Larry, for your continued support. Give them a call and order dinner tonight at 248-814-7559. First and 10 Oxford, backs in the eye. Motion far side. Handoff to Carroll up the middle. Goes for about three. Alec, Alec Fisher on the stop. Yeah. The Dragons are a little short-handed along the defense tonight. Joey Theed is in concussion protocol. Pat Rowland is in pro concussion protocol. And talk to the Joey tonight, he's feeling fine. Hopes to be back next week. Carpenter rolling, looks, throws, complete. On the far side, number three, Alec Brown, senior wide receiver, makes a reception to the 40 yard line. That'll be a first down for Oxford. Oxford's doing a nice job of taking what 
that Lake Orion's given, and that's all they're doing. It's Carpenter sprints out that time, a little outcut by the wide receiver there, number three, Brown. Get what you can get. They got the first down. So first and 10 from the 40. One wide double wing for Oxford. Carpenter under center. Motion the far side. Vaccaro on the carry. And we have a flag. quick so it's got to be procedure that'll back them up put the ball on the 45 it'll be first and 15 it's been a long time since I've seen I'm gonna say it again this many penalties this early in a, in a, yes. in a, in a quarter yes on and, both teams. And, yeah, but and they've been you know, procedure penalties or off jumping off sides. I mean, it's it's stuff that it's it's just timing. It's timing issues. And after uh, the first couple of plays, the nerves should settle down, and you go around the business of playing football. You know better. This is Orion Oxford. The, the, yeah. the, I don't think the nerves ever settle down in a game like I this, don't do think they? So. It looked like. They're going to reset the play clock. So it is first and 15 from the Dragon 45. Single wing on the left on motion this side. Toss back to Vaccaro, he's got a hole, cuts it back upfield, gets over the 40 and we have another flag. That's in the area where you might see holding. It was thrown by the umpire. Again, we don't have the replay here, but it seemed like that was called awfully quick. Yes, and exactly. So you're right. I would have thought the same thing in the area of holding. So it's second down and four. Ball spotted on the 34 on the far hash. About a minute and 15 left to go here in the first. Oxford's leading the Dragons seven to nothing. Two wide single back. Handoff for Carroll. Hit and dropped by Eric Pay. He ran into him and Vaccaro went straight backwards. Brings up a big third down of one. Dragons have got to find a way to get off the field on third down. It's, it's you're also, if you're Oxford too, you're in that, that area where you're probably going to go for it on fourth down yes. in this area. That's a long field goal attempt if you get stopped here. So Let's see what the Wildcats do on third and one. Single wide out. Wing right now, motion left, and Carpenter just takes it up the middle. He's got a first down at the 25. That was a senior knowing what to do. Yeah, he, he just saw, saw a little bubble in the defense of, of Lake Orion and take the snap and get what you can, and he got the first down as we head into the end of the first quarter here. 20.1 to go as they get the chains reset. And they're going to let it run down. We are at the end of the first quarter. Oxford leads the Lake Orion Dragons seven to nothing. This quarter was underwritten by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. 
proud supporters of ONTV since 2009. For more information, visit JetsPizza.com. The scoreboard for the first half of this game is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union. The full-service financial institution serves everyone who resides, works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. Give them a call at 248-814-4000 or visit their website for more information. And for our last read, replay sponsors are sponsored by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Again, proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. I said at the outset, keys to the game, you talk about establishing a ground game for Lake Orion and, and um, evening, in, evening up the time of possession that they had last week. Oxford had one possession that drive and still has a second possession right now. I'm sorry, had one possession in the first quarter. Lake Orion had three possessions, real quick ones. And so right now, time of possession is big time on Oxford's side of the ball and they're up 7 nothing and driving. And you put it best that this is what we saw last week is that the Dragon defense just couldn't make the stop when they needed it. So it's first and 10 for Oxford from the Dragon 25 as we start the second quarter. Oxford breaks a huddle. Twins left, single wide right. Single back is Vaccaro in the backfield. He gets the carry. Cuts it outside. Going up, got a first down and more inside the 15. Another penalty marker at the 20-yard line. And another flag. It's, it's called behind the play. Look at the offensive line doing a nice job for the Wildcats, and that's what Coach Line was talking about last week. See, they were moving bodies and they were making holes, and they just did that there. A big first down for the Wildcats. Yep. I did not see them mark off a penalty. They did not. They waved it off. They waved it off. Okay. Yep. But they threw it. So first and 10 from the 12. Oxford knocking on the door again. Twin split left. Two backs in the backfield. Carpenter from the gun. Now motion this side. Carpenter keeps. And he goes down. Evan Rawlings. Met him textbook tackle. Yeah, I was just going to say you, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. Textbook is right. To make a tackle like that in the open field with an athletic quarterback like Carpenter, well done. Well done. Watch Rawlings come up from his throws, linebacker Throws spot. the block. Boom! Right there. Shoulder. Make contact on Carpenter and knocked him down. Lake so Orion's going to need more of that type of play. Second and 11 from the 14. Carpenter looks, throws, throws low. We have a flag again. The ball pass was incomplete. Did he push off? Th Let's see what the call is. Ineligible downfield. And that's just excitement. You leave your block a little early. So that makes it second and 16 from the 19. They can get a first down at the three. Two wideouts, single back in the backfield. Carpenter under center. And down he goes. <laughs> Judah Kinney came in like the center wasn't even there. I don't think he was. Nobody touched Kinney. Nobody touched Kinney until he got to Carpenter. You might what want play. you might want to block number 92. Yeah. What a play when it was needed. A 
approaching the ten and a half minute mark here in the second quarter. Third down and 22 for Oxford. Carpenter back, looks, throws, got a receiver, and down he goes at the 21. It'll be fourth down and 17. And they're going to try a field goal. It will be a 39-yard field goal by number six, Jay Cady. Ball is down, kick is up, and it's off the right upright. It was far enough, it was high enough, and just clanged off the right upright. So the Dragons will take possession at the 20. 9.31 to go. Oxford leads the Dragons 7 to nothing, and that was a huge miss for the Dragons. A huge miss, and you know what? It, it, that sack by Kinney was huge because yes. it knocked them, I don't want to say knocked them out of field goal range, but but because obviously they had made the attempt, but it makes it a lot much more difficult. Trips to the right for the Dragons, single wide left. Kyler from the gun. Pass out to Stephen Brown. He's met and he's going to be dropped. Brady Carpenter. Brings him down. Joey DeBrinket was trying to seal his defender off inside, and Brown, I don't know if he didn't read the block properly, or, or, or as soon as he caught the ball and turned up field, that, that block was there, but if Brown would have stayed to the outside, he would have been able to avoid, I believe. Carpenter coming up from his outside linebacker spot. It'll be second and 12. Trips right, single wide left. Kyler on the keeper, turns the corner. Brought down number four, Marco Vaccaro. Brought him down after a gain of about four. It'll be third down and eight. The ball's on the 22. Carson came into today's game, uh, second leading rusher on the team, 119 yards, 8.5 yards a carry. Trips to the left, single wide right. Single back in the backfield. Kyler looks, throws. Called complete. Caught by Dorian Hill on the slant. And he got just, again, he got just enough for the first down. Nice timing between Carson and Hill on the slant route. Hill did a great job of securing that ball, bringing it into his body, rolling over that ball as he was being tackled. Dragon stay in trips right. Roverson's a back in the backfield alongside Kyler. Brown in motion. Kyler on the keeper gets maybe a yard, if that much. He kept that ball, and he probably didn't want to because Wilmot was right there as soon as Yeah, Wilmot's been active from that linebacker position tonight. But you're right, he had no place else to go with it. So second and 10, calling it no gain. Again, trips rights. Single back. Kyler back to throw. Looks batted down. Number 56, who I don't have on my program, just made a heck of a play. He made a heck of a play. Carson was trying to go deep to either Brown or Hill, and uh, 
Yeah, he did a great job from his left defensive end position, number 56 did. I wish we had his name because we give him credit for that. But if you're a Lake Orion offense, you've got to make sure they get their hands down on the way to pass rush. A good defensive end, defensive lineman will do just that. If they can't get to the quarterback, they will get their hands up in the passing lane. And that's exactly what he did right there. So third and 10. Same offensive setup for the Dragons. Kyler sets up a screen. Got Roberson, got some blocking. He's got a first down and more. In over midfield, down inside the 45. But we have a flag down at the 34 yard line. Let's see what they got. You're right, Chris, there's a lot of flags tonight. That is the 11th penalty of the night. They're calling it against. They waved it off. Good run by Roberson and results in a first down for the Dragons. Beautifully executed screen pass. That offensive line just lets the penetration of Oxford come up field. Nice completion to Roberson. Nice block right there by Jonah Fix. Pancake block. We love those types of blocks. Big first down for the Dragons. First and 10. Roberson on the carry. Up the middle. Gets maybe one. They're calling a Oxford's jumping up and down, and they have good reason. They got the football. Cameron Jarrett on the fumble recovery for Oxford. Let's see if we can see it right here. The handoff, the exchange looks good. Roberson, yep, number 30 came in. Cameron Jarrett popped it out. I don't know if it was his hand or his helmet, but he ended up knocking it out and recovering the and ball for the Wildcats. So first and 10 for Oxford from their own 43. They set up trips left. Carpenter back, looks, throws deep. Got a receiver. Number three, Alec Brown into Lake Orion territory at the 39 yard line. Brown was in the slot that time coming from left to right, just crossing the face of Carpenter. Carpenter had time. Lake Orion's not putting the pen, uh, pressure on Carpenter that they need to. He had the time, found Brown over the middle. They're so in Dragons territory once again. First and 10 on the 39 with 6.10 to go in the second quarter. Jackson Keene split out wide this side. Carpenter for Carroll on the handoff. Gets a couple down to the 38. 37, they'll call it. And it'll be second down and eight. I believe that the Vaqueros that are on the Oxford roster are relatives to the Vaqueros who starred for Lake Orion in the 80s and in the 90s. And if they are, as Sal Vaquero goes up the middle, the apples don't fall far from the tree. Both Danny and Jimmy Vaccaro were outstanding running backs for the Dragons in the late 80s and early 90s. And if you need a historian to talk about Lake Orion football, it is Doug Corliss. <laughs> I've been around long enough. <laughs> so it is third down and six from the 35. I'm gonna say it again, Lake Orient's got to get off the field on third down. Toss back to Vaccaro, coming this side. Up stalls and it is also number 45, Logan Wilmot on the carry. 
and he got a gain of about two. It'll be fourth down and three. Good job by the Dragons. Fourth and four. They just kept bringing it to the near sideline here, and and and, and um, Meyer couldn't cut back at all. Did a nice job and bringing it up to fourth down here. And Oxford's going to go for it. They're kind of in that no man's land where it's too close to punt it, too far away for a field goal, so you might as well go for it. Twins right, single wide left, now motion right. Carpenter rolls, looks, throws, got a receiver, first down. At the 25 was number 14, Brody Moore. Same thing there. Chase Whitaker is the cornerback on that side, sitting high, and Brown just does a nice job. Again, knowing where the sticks are, yep. turning around, Carpenter on the rollout, sprint out, completes the ball, first down and 10. So first and 10, single wide right, toss back this side to Jackson Keene to the 17 nose of the ball just on the 17 it'll be second and three it's so interesting to see I mean again we've done Lake or, or in Oxford for a long time I, I go back to it we're not seeing the yellow pants in their coach on the no. sideline and we're not seeing power them run power a play that they ran right. all the time and we're seeing them put the ball in the air and they're so far, to their credit, they're doing a nice job. Oxford's going to take a timeout with 2.44 to go. But you're right, we used to see that. And with those little passes out on the flat, it looks exactly what we saw last week at Southfield A&T with Isaiah Mitchell. He just throw that little ball out on the flat. The receivers were always there, and they were making vertical yardage after the catch because you know what because they're letting their athletes do something in space with the ball mm -hmm. and when you're sitting so high defensively like we've seen so far tonight with the dragons um, that's exactly what they're allowing them to do again they're taking advantage of what the dragons are providing them they're not getting to carpenter with the exception of the kinney sack and they're they're hitting the flats and uh, they're having success and they're 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 winning the time of possession battle and uh that was an issue last week, and so far tonight, uh, it's been an issue for the Dragons, even though they're only down seven to nothing. Yeah. So it is second and three. The ball is spotted on the 18. Lake Orion has their full complements of timeouts. Oxford just burned their first. Two wide out, single back, tight end on the right. Vaccaro, he's going to be stopped short after a gain of maybe two. It'll be third down and one. And the clock continues to run. We're mid-September and, and uh, it's a little hot, it's a little sticky, it's a little humid. I don't know that we're used to that. There's not w any wind out there when you look out at that f American flag. No. It's not near as bad as it was three weeks ago against Eisenhower. Handoff to Carroll. I don't think he got it. He's gonna be about a half yard short and it'll be fourth down. Let's see what they do. They hit the upright last time on the uh, field goal attempt, Oxford did. Jackson Keene checks in at a wide out. Brady Carpenter's going to the sideline to get the play from Coach Line. They're gonna probably run some clock and then call a timeout my, is my guess. And you know what, this is key because Oxford gets the ball to start the second yes. half. And so if you're the Dragons, you've got to find a way to stop them from scoring. They're in the red zone. Stop them from scoring. And 
I, I talked with Coach Powell before the game, and he said that last week against Southfield that some of the defensive back were, were losing their position trying to help in the backfield. Well, when they lost their position, the guy they were supposed to be covering was open. And he said that was, a, that was an emphasis this week is to, as, as we heard so well, do your job. But again, we've seen for the third straight week a really good quarterback who is very accurate with his passes, knows what he's doing with a football. Do your job and know how it complements the other players on your defense. Yes. You know, and that's why you're assigned to do just that. You can't make every play, but if you do your assignment and you're aligned properly more times than not, your, your defense is going to be successful. Backs in the eye, Vaquero's the tailback. Motion far side. Carpenter sneaks it forward. He's got a first down. They had success with that keep earlier on yes. a fourth down play. They won't go back to it. So they'll reset the chains. It's showing a minute eight to go here in the second quarter. Oxford doesn't seem to be in any particular hurry to get up to the line. They'll burn the clock. Carpenter back. Rolling. Got pressure. Shakes it off. Gets something. Gets a gain of about two. And the clock continues to run. Yeah, Alec Fisher was right there. But uh, Cobber did, did a nice job of avoiding that sack. And Coach Line just took a timeout. While we have a moment during this timeout, big thing coming up for Orion Neighborhood Television. Filmmakers, be ready. The Wildwood Film Festival will be kicking off on Thursday, October 7th at the Orion Neighborhood Television Studio located at 1349 Joslin Road. Teams will be given their requirements which include a prop, location, and a line of dialogue that is to be included in their film. You will have until 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 12th to submit the film. On Wednesday, the 13th, the films will be viewed and judged at 7 p.m. at the Oxford 7 Cinema in Oxford. Open to all ages, it costs $25 per team to enter, and three winners will be chosen for cash prizes. The contest benefits the Lake Orion High School Students Offering Support Program. And we'll finish it up after this play. Carpenter back, looks, throws. It looked like the ball skipped, but they're giving him a completion to Jackson Keene. And now they're going hurry up. Carpenter grounds it. It'll be third down and eight with 21.4 seconds. Getting back to our Wildwood Film Festival to register, Go to www.orionontv.org or call 248-693, no, 393-1060. The officials are talking. I don't see a flag on the field, but the officials are talking about something. They're resetting the game, the play clock, excuse me. Clock still showing 21.4 seconds. It's a third and five from the nine. Oxford has no timeouts left, so they're gonna have to go to the end zone on this or work a play out of bounds because yeah. they can't afford to they can't afford to keep it in bounds. Watch out for the quick snap. They run up to the line. 
Carpenter rolling, rolling, looks, throws. Caught for the touchdown. Number 15, who again, we don't have on our roster, but he got open in the corner of the end you zone. You know, he got open in the corner of the end zone because as Carpenter's rolling to his right, he worked his way back inside to create separation and then came out to the to the outside, the sideline, and uh, Carpenter saw him at that time when he created the separation, made a nice pass, touchdown Wildcats. Jay Cady, kick down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 14.6 seconds to go. The Wildcats increase their lead to 14 to nothing. If you could see it right here, number 15 steps inside and then creates the separation he needs to on Chase Whitaker for the touchdown. Yep. So well executed on the rollout by Carpenter. A nice route by number 15, whoever he might whoever be. Whoever he is. We'll see if we can get a name on him at the half. Doug, they talk all the time in the NFL about winning the last four minutes of the second quarter, leading into winning the next four minutes of the third quarter. And again, we talked about just now, Lake Orion has to had to stop, ideally, the Wildcats from scoring. They didn't. And now, again, Oxford gets the ball to start the yes. third quarter. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that momentum, if that momentum shifts for the Dragons coming out after halftime. It's going to have to if they want to be on the positive side of the ledger at the end of the game. High end over end kick goes into the end zone. And the Dragons will take over first and 10 at the 20 with 14.6 seconds. That was a 57-yard drive, very methodical, very deliberate, but they got there and they did the job. And they left Lake Orion with under 15 seconds left. Executed as if that coach over there maybe has played a little bit in the, the NFL and, and understands game flow and, and game dynamics and understands how to work the clock. Those little passes out on the flat, does a guy named Alvin Kamara ring a bell? <laughs> he said he brought a lot from Coach Payton to the high school ranks. Up the middle, Billy Roberson. Got a first down and more, trying to get outside. He got 6.3 seconds left to go. He's got a first down at the 42-yard line. Great run by Roberson. And did you see how well he was protecting that ball yes. this time? Yes, he was. Even in the open field, making sure that ball is secure. Nice big play. The biggest play of the night offensively for the Dragons. First and 10. Kyler from the gun. Roberson again up the middle. Got an opening. And he's down to... Lake Orion called timeout with seven tenths of a second left. They're marking the ball first down at the Oxford 45. Got time for what? One play. You got to go One up top, play. do something, right? Put your speed burners out there and let them do their thing. And that's just it. Lake Orion's got plenty of them. They do. You know, and so we just got to provide time for Carson to be able to drop back, throw it up, and make something happen. You never know what can happen. Tipped ball, uh, somebody slips. How many times have we seen it? Yeah. At all levels of the game. We've seen the speed of Roberson. We've seen the speed of Stephen Brown. And they're both on the field. In a play like this defensively, you put your, your, your guys all the way back. You put the guys that can jump all the way back, you know, the taller guys, whatever, to try to knock it down. Dorian Hill split wide right. C.J. Witt and Brown are in slots right. Roberson now goes out to the left side. Kyler throws it, and it's picked off and dropped by number 15 who we still don't have. We've played a half. 
The Oxford Wildcats lead the Lake Orion Dragons 14 to nothing. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television. You're watching OCTV. You know what? There's not much to talk about, but if if you, if if you didn't know the score, okay? Let me read to you what one team did in their possessions. Punt, 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 fumble, and then an interception to end the half. And the other team, touchdown from 11 yards out, field goal attempt, no good, touchdown. So, uh, you know, it's pretty indicative without, you know, you can base, guess what the score is based off yeah. of that. It's 14-0 right now, but bottom line, for Lake Orion, they haven't done anything with their drives. Uh, 87 total yards, 77 on the ground. Two of those, uh, the last two plays, of the, a couple of the last two plays of the, of the second quarter there, um, big plays by Roberson, got you most or almost half of the rushing yardage. But nonetheless, punt, 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 fumble, fumble, or fumble interception, yep. excuse me, that's just not going to get it done. You know what, we, we talked in pregame about, you know, the problems the defensive that the defense had the last two weeks. What have you seen with the offense that concerns you? Just the, the ability, not the ability, they can't sustain drives. They're not moving the ball like they, they did way back in week one. Again, yep. again, teams have progressed. We're already into week four, but when it's all said and done, they're not moving the ball like they were uh, in week one, and they're not sustaining drives. Lake Orion, I'm sorry, Oxford dominated in time of possession. And, and you'll see, that's why you see what you see on the, on the scoreboard. Uh, Lake Orient's got to find a way to sustain drives, put first down after first down, and then ultimately put it points into uh, the ball into the end zone. But uh, if they don't do that, this might be a long second half. And so we start the second half. Trying to see who's kicking off. It's a long way away down there. High end over end kick into the end zone. Number 15, Jake Lee, kicked off for the Dragons. And Oxford will take over first and 10. It goes without saying, I think, but Lake Orion has got to get a stop on this drive without giving up points to at least build and gain some confidence back. Uh, they've got to. They've been on the field for so long, that defense. And we've talked about it. We talked about it week one. It's hot, it's muggy. It takes a toll on a, especially on a defensive player getting late in the game. Offense, if you're moving the ball, you can go all day long. Carpenter rolling, looks, throws back across his body, complete to number 42, Tate Meyer. He's got a PA announcer, Roger Smith, just called him Mir, so so will I. He's up over the 40-yard line to just about the 43, and it'll be first and 10 just underway here in the second half. Twins to the right, tight end set up on the, two tight ends set up on the left. Vaccaro on the carry. He's hit and dropped by Stephen Brown, who came in, did a good hip tackle on him. Up to the 47, it'll be about second and five, call it second and six. You could see that hole develop from up here. And, and you see what Vaccaro saw, saw, but Brown yeah. did a nice job of closing it down. But you don't want your secondary to be making those tackles. That's right. You want the front, that front seven to be doing that. So second down and six. Vaccaro on the handoff, trying to turn a corner, and he does. And he's met by Stephen Brown and others including Miguel Vasquez to take him down after a two-yard gain. And we did find out 
that number 15 for Oxford was shown on our rosters as number five. That is John Escudo. And he's had a whale of a game. So it's third and five they're calling it. Wide receiver each side, single back. Carpenter looks, throws, got a receiver, got behind the secondary, and he's going to go. He's in for the touchdown. Number seven, Mitch Viviano. And he slipped a tackle, got behind the secondary, and nobody was there to stop him. He's, he's got good size, but he did, didn't need the size right there. He just ran a vertical from his slot receiver position. And as soon as Carpenter saw him get past that first layer of the, the defense, put the ball on him and into the end zone from 52 yards out. So Jay Cady lines up for the extra point. Ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 9.57 to go here in the third. It's now 21 to nothing. Oxford. No, we're waiting for the replay now. Oh, here we go. Nope. We missed the replay. Hey, go mobile with Orion Neighborhood Television anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with Orion Neighborhood Television to see what's happening in our studio, see upcoming events, and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand. Orion Neighborhood Television, working to bring Lake Orion to the world. We talked about it in the first half. Again, Oxford scored with 20 some odd seconds left to put seven more on the board, make it 14 nothing. Less than two minutes and three seconds into the third quarter. All right, they put seven more on the yes. board. Winning the last four minutes of the f first half. So far, they're winning the first four minutes, not even four minutes of the second half. And it's a 14-point swing just right there. Katie's kick goes into the end zone. I've been impressed with this Jay Katie. He's got a good leg on him. I was watching him in pregame. And he's only a sophomore. Yeah. So the Dragons take over, first and 10. Dorian Hill will split white right. Joey Debrinkit is a tight end on the right. Matt Freeman set up on a wing right. And two wides left. Nobody's out here on Dorian Hill. Check down pattern, and the ball's complete for a two-yard gain. And he had all the verticals, or all the receivers running vertical, and Payne just slipped out in back of him. Second down and six, so give him a gain of four. Empty backfield. Freeman in motion. He gets the carry, trying to turn a corner. And he does up near the first down, but I don't think he has it. And you saw the offensive lineman as he was turning the corner throw their hands up. If they just get in the, and, and there is a flag down, so they may have them on a hold. And they do. On Ray Payne. That's Lake Orient's seventh penalty of the game. They had eight penalties last week against Southfield yeah. A&T. So they come out three wide receivers to the right, a wide out and a wing to the left. Again, Kyler's in an empty backfield. Tyler looking, throwing, caught. Matt Freeman up near the 26-yard line. They're going to, Jack Wellman, they're going to mark him 
about the 26 and a half. It'll be third and three for the Dragons. You're down 21. You're in a situation where you almost have to, not, not only do you start needing chunk plays to get, but you, you're gonna have to start considering going for it on fourth down as well yeah. if you don't get it, even on your side of the field. Yeah, these throws to the flat are not gonna get you the chunk yardage you need. So third and three, Kyler looks to Freeman. He just jumps over and gets the first down at the 31 yard line. Good job on ex extending his body as he was being tackled to pick up the first down. Nice effort getting that first down. That's exactly what they needed. Got us to start sustaining this drive some way, somehow. And notice that the last couple times, last couple uh, plays, they've gone empty set, five wide receivers. Yep, five wide, double slot on the right. Kyler looks, throws, got Freeman again up over midfield down to the 47 of Oxford. It'll be another first down. Ball's marked on the 48. Spacing's a little, little off there between between Wellman and Hill, but nonetheless, Freeman, came, or sorry, Wellman came back for the ball and on that kind of underthrown ball and did a nice job and Lake Orion is in Oxford territory. First, first down, they stay trips right, twins left. Carson on the keeper, gets jammed up, no gain, second down. Cameron Jarrett in on the tackle for the Wildcats. It's no gain, it's second down. So Dorian Hill is split wide right. Debrink gets in a slot right. Freeman's in a slot right. Kyler rolls out, looking, throwing, throws behind Ray Payne, and we have a marker down on the field. Carson is flushed out. He's trying to make something happen, trying to get some, get the ball downfield to somebody. Spacing you know, from this angle up here wasn't great. There was three guys in the same kind of vicinity as Carson rolls out. They didn't make anything on the first two play and to get a pass interference gives them 15 yards and a first down. You know what, anyway, anyhow. However, whatever it takes. First down on the 33. Mark at the 34. Same offensive setup. Kyler getting pressure up the middle. Looks, throws, and just throws it away. Intended for Dorian Hill, but way over his head. That'll bring up second down and 10. And you hate to say that your offense gets in a spot where it's, it's desperation passing. But when you're down 21, you've got to get points on the board. You, you do have to get points on the board, but you can't neglect. You can't neglect the run game. There's got to be a little bit of balance. You can still run quarterback draw. You can still single receive or single back and run some, some running plays. You've got to be able to do it both ways, I think. Kyler, got time, looks, throws, right side, out of bounds intended for Freeman. I, I think I think often. Or Wellman. Why do I keep calling him Freeman? I don't know. I Jack Wellman. 
I think oftentimes we think that we're down by by a lot, and 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 yes, we are. But again, in, in high school football, the clock stops on first yes. downs, and and you don't have to get it. Yes, we talk about wanting to get chunk plays, but at the same time, a, a run can be a chunk play as well. Yes. And when there's not a threat of a single back in the backfield, and there is five wides, you, yeah. more times than not, you, you're. you're you're dropping back to pass. Your protection's got to be there. Right now, Carson's been getting pressure. Incomplete, intended for Wellman. He was triple covered that time. Brady Carpenter, Vaccaro, and Askiuto were all in there covering Wellman. And now it's fourth and 10. So when they're rushing four and there's seven sitting back and you throw in a triple coverage, there's gotta be someone else. Somebody's yes, gotta be exactly. Open. And that's what Carson's gotta be able to see. Yeah, they have no choice but to go for it. Fourth and 10, they're gonna go for it. I think Isaiah Marv is split wide left. And we have a delay. Oh. Coach Blackstock's calling a timeout. 6.15 to go. Dragons down by three touchdowns. Hey, did you know that ONTV has its very own internet radio station? You can create your own podcast or radio show or sign up to become a DJ. For more information on the radio station, give us a call at 248-393-1060. I was just on the OAA podcast last week with Ian Locke and Sammy Terramina. We talked everything OAA. And Sammy does a great job on that podcast. Does his homework. And then I walk downstairs at you know pregame, and I see the ONTV truck down there, yeah. and, and you're plastered all over it, looking good as always. I yeah. mean, I'm sitting with a star here. They were running out of paint, so they took what they had. <laughs> so fourth down, four wides right and a single wide left. We saw this against Southfield last week. Carson looks, throws over the head of C.J. Witt, and a flag comes out. C.J. Witt was running that seam route, and a pass was over his head. All I can assume is he was held up running his route. On fourth and ten. Three penalties this drive on Oxford. Two are crucial, in, in resulting into first down. Yeah. So. Tight formation for the Dragons this time. Three receivers set up on a wing right. Low snap. Kyler going for the end zone. Isaiah Marv out of bounds. He brought it down. It was a great catch, he but he did. was certainly out of bounds. Good call by the official. That's exactly what the old wide receivers coach would say. Go up and get it at its highest point. So that'll be second down and 10. Stephen Brown splits out wide to the left. C.J. Witt, wide right. Kyler, back, got pressure. Throws. Incomplete. Look at the spacing there. there there's three Dragon wide receivers in the same vicinity. Yeah. In the same vicinity. And three Oxford defenders on the guy that went up for the ball. It's cr When you've got five receivers, two to one side, three to the other, it's so critical. Spacing both horizontally and vertically is yeah. so critical. And it wasn't. didn't look very good there. 
So third down and 10 from the 19. Kyler rolling right. He's going to keep it. Got a first down and more. He's in touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. Tyler Carson kept it himself and took it 19 yards for the touchdown. Good tightrope act along the right sideline. That's what you do. In that case, five wides, right? You have five verticals or crossing routes, and you use your quarterback's athleticism to get to the edge. And once he got to the edge, it was a straight shot to the end zone. Yeah, he had to cut inside about the five-yard line, but good athletes will make that play happen, and he did there. Jake Lee kicks the extra point. 5.51 left to go here in the third. It's now 21-7, Oxford. Watch Carson here on the edge. You get it. four receivers to the nearest, this near side, and he just takes it and goes. Cuts inside right about the five yard line. Well done. Fighting to the end zone. Touchdown, Dragons. Brady Carpenter was the one that met him, but when you have a head of steam going, you know, he just went went right by him. Yeah, nothing fancy, just who wants it more? And, and Car Carson wanted it more right there. Exactly what the Dragons need to answer that first score in this first second half, excuse me, from the Wildcats. Now they got to do it defensively. Now they got to get a stop. They haven't no stopped question. Oxford offensively. The only thing that stopped off Oxford offensively in that first half was that right upright yep. on the missed field goal. A little life on this green and white side. A little life. Zach Jones will kick off. Number 15, John Askudo, back deep for Oxford. <laughs> Referee Wally Rose blows a whistle. They got Outside it. Kick. They got it. Dragons got it. Absolutely. We think. If they did absolutely perfect execution. Absolutely. Because that way, that front five of. Max Firestein on the recovery. That front five of Oxford was starting to drop back and it bounced perfectly. And uh, boy, well done, well done. Well done. Gutsy call, even this early on, even though you're only down two scores, gutsy call early on. And that's hard to execute. Yes, it is. I don't know if you watched NFL football this past weekend, but the Lions executed that as well. Yes, they did. In a similar fashion, and they ended up getting points out of it. Let's hope Lake Orion does here as well. We always said kick the top of the ball, let it hit the turf and take a bounce. Dragon still with three wide to the right, twins left. Kyler in the gun. Kyler drops, rolls, looks, throws, complete. C.J. Witt tiptoes the sideline. They're going to call a crackback block. Let's see it right here on the. Right about here. Right there there on Dorian Hill and again it's all about protecting the player yep that's why they instituted that rule and uh, like how many years ago now time flies by I can't it does but nonetheless it's it's for the players health and safety it's all player safety exactly although you although you do look at it from that ca great camera angle and you wonder if they're not gonna wave it off because the defender did turn and actually see the block coming. Talking with Joe Johnson, our sideline cameraman, early or before the game. Yep. 
Legal blind, blind side block. To get in the right position when it's called for. And there he was right there getting the shot, sometimes at a sacrifice of personal safety, but he's <laughs> always there. So the Dragons will take over after the penalty. First and 17 from their own 45. 539 left here in the third. Kyler looks, throws too high. He, he almost looked like he short-armed that ball. Almost a three-quarter motion, and Isaiah Marv just couldn't go up high enough. Climb that ladder once again, it's tough to do. Five wides. Low snap, Kyler back, looks, throws. Got C.J. Witt over midfield down to about the 48-yard line of Oxford. Got the penalty yardage back. It'll be third down, and we'll call it nine. Eight and a half. Hey, get nine to a, and a half. You get eight, nine play, yards on that play to get to a little bit more manageable play. You're going to end up going for it, I'm guessing, on fourth down if you don't get it. Yeah, you almost have to. The defense hasn't been able to stop you know, Oxford as of yet. It's been the two turnovers by Oxford that have helped. Tyler back, looks, throws. Got C.J. Wick, got a first down and more. Cuts it outside down to the 22. First down, Dragons. Jack Wellman, number four, had a great block downfield right about the 35-yard line or so. And uh, well executed. Watch Wellman right here on the block. Stay on the block, boom! Knock him down, sit on him so he can't get up and make the play. Nice play all around by the Dragons and Witt. First and 10 from the 22. 4.34 to go here in the third. Five wide, three right, or three left, two right. Kyler rolling, looking, throwing, out of bounds. Caught by Dorian Hill about three yards out of bounds. The touchdown run, I know that ball was was snapped low and he had he bobbled it a little bit to get to the edge, but the, the touchdown run, he was able to turn the corner and get upfield. The other times, Oxford's doing a nice job of, of stringing it to the sideline, so not allowing him to turn his shoulders towards the line of scrimmage and attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, as long as Oxford continues to do that, they're going to be in great shape. That's why that, making that, securing that edge offensively, whether it's your right tackle or tight end, uh, you've got to be able to do that if you're going to sprint out like that. Coach Powell sends the play in. Kyler looks, throws, incomplete, intended for Wellman. Yeah, you know, Wellman did a nice job of sitting down in that little void right there, but when he sat down, he, he, he look, jumped up for it, had it in his hands, and then looked back to see where the defender was coming from, and when he did that, that's when the ball ended up on the ground. You got to catch, tuck, secure the ball, and then look to get upfield. So third and 10, trips right, twins left. Kyler looks, throws, got a receiver. Incomplete. 11, Isaiah Marv, again, went up to get it. But he had a defender hanging on his back all the all the while. They're gonna go for it. Stephen Brown's checking in. Marv is out there. Witt. Dorian Hill. 
in Wilman's four wides right, single wide left, but the guy split left can burn it. Low snap. Kyler looks, throws. Caught with, with Brady Carpenter hanging all over him. C.J. Witt made the catch, got it inside the five, and he was wearing Carpenter like a cheap suit. Yeah, the placement of that ball by Carson was absolutely perfect, because you're right, Doug. Carpenter was on Witt's back, and there was absolutely no way if that ball's not thrown there, that ball is caught. Well done on both ends. Roberson's in at a running back. Kyler trying to cut it upfield. He's in. Touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons. <laughs> Kyler Carson from three yards out. And the Dragons are within striking distance. Jake Lee in for the extra point. Connor McCartan. Will hold. Ball's down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. 3.38 to go. It's now Oxford 21, Lake Orion 14. Be sure to tune in to replays of your favorite games right here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check our program guide on our webpage at Orion ontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, visit our YouTube link for games on demand. www.orionontv.org Two special teams turnovers by Oxford. One on the muff punt early in the first quarter. Uh, Lake Orion couldn't, couldn't, couldn't convert. Lake Orion recovers an onside kick. They convert this time. 21-14. We got a ball game now, Doug. We got a ball game. It's Orion-Oxford. You'd expect nothing less. High short kick. Little pooch kick. Caught and dropped immediately was number 47, Andrew Whitmer. Just a little pooch kick. He had the option of making a fair catch, elected to bring it in and was dropped immediately. Now it's time for the defense to turn it up a notch. They gotta get a stop. The defense has to step up right here. Andy Horton in at right cornerback. Stephen Brown, left cornerback. Joe Bruno at one safety position along with Eric Pay. Handoff, jammed up, gets maybe a couple. Vaccaro on the carry. Horton and Bruno on the stop there. Saw about four, five, well, three, four dragons to the ball that time. Second and eight. And that's when we found that they've been most successful is Get hats on the ball. Swarm to the ball. Naz Lardell in at a linebacker spot. Carpenter looks, throws. Got a receiver out of bounds. Looks like he's right at the first down marker or just short. And they're calling it first down. Move the chains. We've seen that rollout and a little out quite a bit this yeah. year, this game. Uh, it's been successful for them. When that caught, catch was made, Stephen Brown sitting five yards off of that, that wide receiver. Yes. 
Got to close it, tighten it up a little bit. A little confusion in the Lake Orion defense. They're, sh they're slow getting into their positions. Carpenter looks, going deep, got a receiver wide open. In for the touchdown is number 15, John Askiuto. And he was wide open. Fifty nine yards. That young man's put on a show tonight. Yes, he has. Two touchdowns from Carpenter, and he had the interception to end the first half. Katie on for the extra point. Ball's down, kick is up, kick is good. 229 to go in the third and talk about answering a score with a score Oxford just did it how did he get so wide open yeah two receivers were coming off the line and Escudo just split the seam and, and got on split the, 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 the two uh, safeties in the middle of the field and 59 yards later it's six points for the Wildcats and did you know that DVD copies can be purchased by calling Orion Neighborhood Television at 248-393-1060. For only $10, you can get a copy of not only this game, but any game or program in our broadcast vault. DVD copies, 248-393-1060. We're eight minutes, nine minutes, and 31 seconds into the third quarter. And we've seen four touchdowns. Yeah. Four possessions, four touchdowns. Yeah. So much for playing defense, huh? Stephen Brown and Dorian Hill are deep. Robeson and Nick Eaton are up backs. End over end kick into the end zone. It'll come out. Dragons will take over. First and 10 at the 20. And it's just been back and forth, back and forth this entire third quarter. A lot of good football going on around the OAA. We'll get to some scores in a little bit here. Twins left, twins right. Tight end set up on the left side in a wing lap. Kyler looks, throws, overthrows Isaiah Marv. Clarkston 42, Southfield A&T &A 21, third quarter. Clarkston's on a roll. Yes, they yeah, are. Just you know, they they said, how are they going to be after losing Spindler and Dellinger? Well, they haven't missed a beat. West Bloomfield 16, Stony Creek 10 in the fourth quarter. Kyler back, looks, going deep. Had Marv, he just couldn't get turned around, but Matt Wellman or Jack Wellman was open in the seam. Absolutely it was, absolutely it was. So now it's third and 10 from the 20. Right now your focus got to be just pick up the first down. Carpenter back in a safety spot, Ascudo is playing left cornerback. Kyler drops the ball, looks, tries to set up a screen to C.J. Witt, and it just wasn't there. Yeah, everything was thrown off by the drop of the, of the snap, yeah. and then, you know, the timing was off, and I don't know if Witt would have had any, any where to go had he caught that ball. 
So Zach Jones will punt it away. Ascudo sets up office about midfield with 2.16 to go in the third. High kick, nice kick. Escudo takes it, cuts it upfield. He's got running room. Down inside the 20 to the 15. Good return, sets Oxford up first and 10 from the 15. Set the Dragons defense, CJ Witt in at a safety spot. Naz Lardell in at a safety a linebacker spot. First and 10, I formation in the backfield. Toss back to Vaccaro. He's got an opening, gets five, breaks, got a first down. Inside the five, good running by Vaccaro. I was talking with uh, PA announcer Roger Smith at halftime. We pretty much agreed that they are the two Vaccaros that are in the game tonight are related to the brothers that were here in the late 80s, early 90s. Second and one, they're calling it, from the six. Toss back to Vaccaro, looking for running room. He's dropped for a loss or no gain. Dragons did a great job of just extending that play to the near sideline. He had nowhere to go. Yeah, he just string it out. Under a minute to go. It's second down and goal from the seven. Third. So yeah, third yeah. down. I'm sorry, third and two from the seven. Third down defense, Dragons. Escudo in for a touchdown. He came in motion around the back, took the handoff, cut it up field, and just kept breaking tackles on his way in. Third touchdown of the night. Yeah. As we said in pregame, it's Lake Orion Oxford. Anything can happen. Jay Cady just kind of squirts it over the crossbar. I don't know if that was partially blocked or he just didn't get a good kick at it, but it just kind of squirted over the crossbar. Nice double move right there, a little juke there at about the seven, eight yard line. Yep. Was able to slip inside into the end zone. So that makes it 35-14. With 25.1 seconds left to go here in the third. And again, if you're the Dragons, you've got to put points on the board. It doesn't help that you've got a kicker that's been putting him in the end zone all night long like Katie has. Let you sit, you're starting your drive at your own 20 yard line. Yeah. You have to go 80 yards to score. I mentioned that game earlier. West Now it's West Bloomfield 24, Stony Creek 10. I mentioned that game because those are those two teams are Lake Orient's two, next two opponents. Yes. So West Bloomfield 2 and 1, Stony Creek 2 and 1 coming into tonight's game. High end over end kick and taken at the goal line. And Stephen Brown kind of stepped back to start his run. 
and he went into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. Dragons will take over first and 10. So we'll set the Dragons offense. Marv split wide right. Dorian Hill split left. Wellman in a slot right. Kyler rolls right, looks, throws, caught by number 26, Ray Payne. Dragon's going to come without a huddle. But the third quarter will come to an end. We played three. The Oxford Wildcats, 35. The Lake Orion Dragons, 14. The third quarter was underwritten by Paul's Carpet Shine, the privately owned an operated company provides residential and cleaning services for the Orion area. For more information, give him a call at 248-568-9264 or visit their website at paulscarpetshine.com. The fourth quarter of this game is underwritten by Legacy 925, located at 925 North Lapeer Road in Oxford, Legacy 925 is your one-stop shop for family fun, providing dining, music, entertainment, go-karts, trampolines, and so much more. Visit their website at thelegacy925.com. So Dragons have the ball second down and two at the 28, they have twins right, three wides left. Ball's batted down at the line and incomplete, makes it third and two. That's that second deflection by that left defensive lineman, number 56, getting the hands up. And that's the thing, if you're Oxford, you can just, work, the front four can just work on teeing off and yeah. just, you, you know they're dropping back to pass. Yeah. You can pass rush, get your hands up and, uh, Kyler looks, throws. Complete on the far sideline to Debrinket. 84, Joey Debrinket got on the sideline, hauled it in, stayed in bounds. First down for the Dragons on the 34. Just underway here in the fourth. Tyler back, looks, throws over the middle, wide open is Wellman over midfield into the Oxford territory at the, they're going to call it about the 46 and a half. Marco Vaccaro on tackle. Simple crossing route. Wellman wide open there in the middle. And that's what Oxford's trying to do to keep the ball to the middle of the field, yep. keep the defenders sitting high and outside. Find the voids in the middle, and Wellman did that and real he well. He just had kind of a delay takeoff yep. when, he, when he ran his route. In the middle of the field was wide open. Kyler, rolling right, rolling left, looks, throws. Too high for Payne. It'll be second and 10 from the 46. Payne, Payne was open. T Kyler's got to just work on getting his shoulders turned parallel to the line of scrimmage and put something on it. He was kind of drifting towards the Lake Orion sideline and as a result, threw it high. Trips left, twins right. Kyler looks, got pressure, down he goes. Back in Lake Orion territory at the 48 yard line. 
Viviano. Six yard loss. Yeah, Viviano, Jarrett were all in there on the, on the sack. They're gonna mark him on the 49, make it a five yard loss. It'll be third down and 15. When you're not getting separation downfield on, on your route running, it's very difficult for these guys up front to sustain yeah. and protect for that long. Got a rolling left. Looks, throws, almost intercepted. C.J. Witt kind of turned into defensive back to knock the ball away. So third down and 15. We do have a penalty marker on the field. I don't see it, but they're talking like there is. Referee Wally Rose. Let's see what we got. <laughs> against a pseudo. That's the third one of those of the night against Oxford. Yeah. Pass interference. All it, and, and they've been at critical yeah, times. Yeah, that's they have. It's hard to see from that angle there. He was coming in going up for the ball. And I think that's what Coach Line is talking to referee Wally Rose about. They call it on uh, Sudo? 15? Yeah. They did. They did. So that was away from that camera shot there. So regardless... On the far a, side of the field. Yeah, a first and 10 for the Dragons on the 35-yard line. Kyler rolling, looking, throwing. C.J. Witt's got it, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. What a job of concentration on that catch. It was tipped and he made, kept his concentration, made the catch, got into the end zone for the touchdown. You always, you always do that drill in practice if you're a defensive back, the tip drill. Well, yep. guess what? It paid off in this, in this instance offensively. Jake Lee in for the extra point. Ball is down. Kick is up. Deflected. The kick is tipped and no good. He didn't look like he got a real good swing in at that ball. So. And Carson rolling out and is able to get the edge. DJ gets Just the lofts hit. it up to Witt. And number four. He not only had to catch the ball, he had to fight off number 14, Brody Moore. And I think Moore coming from his safety spot saw the deflection and was going for the ball and didn't focus on Witt. Yeah. And as a result, Witt got by him for the touchdown. So it's 35 to 20 with 10.23 to go in the ball game. Lake Orion has two timeouts left. Oxford has their full complement of three. Six touchdowns this half alone. How about that? <laughs> well, so Zach Jones will kick off. Oxford's got a hands team up front. They have nobody deep. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Taken. And touchdown. Number hey, we 30. Got, we got a penalty marker back here at Cameron the 49-yard line. They may get him for trying to advance the kick. I don't think the ball was touched before. Well, no, it wasn't touched by the Dragons. No. 
Let's see what the call is. So it will be a touchdown. Wow. You don't see that very often. Oh, no, sir. It had a good bounce, but... It came right to him. The Dragons were all heading downfield, and Jarrett was the only one heading to the south. So Katie on for the extra point. Tough snap, and he did not get it over. The kick is no good. 10-18 to go in the fourth. It's 41 to 20. Oxford over the Dragons. So we will try it again. And look, Chris, we know injuries are part of the game, but you can tell they miss Joey Theed up front tonight. There's no question about it. They missed. They, they missed. They missed bad Absolutely. The offensive line. Yep. But that being said, they'll be back next week. There's the double O trophy that will be handed out tonight after the game. Lake Orion's held on to it for two years because these teams did not play last year. Yeah, 35 nothing uh, score back in 2019, Lake yeah. Orion. Well. I am impressed with the job that Coach Lyons done with this Oxford team. Katie puts a foot into it. High end over end kick into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20 where the Dragons will take over, first and 10. Two timeouts left for the Dragons. When we get a, a long stoppage of play, we'll go over the Wildwood Festival promo again. 10-18 to go. Dragons come out, trips right, twins left. Kyler back, gonna take off and he smothered, gets back to the line of scrimmage and dropped. Gavin Green, number 74 on the stop for the Wildcats. They're going to give him a gain of one. It'll be second and nine. Final score, West Bloomfield 24, Stony Creek 10. West Bloomfield goes to three and one. Stony Creek falls to two and two. We talked about it in the pregame, about the log jam that is in the OAA red after Clarkston. Speaking of Clarkston, 49-21 over Southfield A&T in the fourth quarter. Wow. Tyler going deep. Too deep for Stephen Brown. Yeah, he had separation on Katie there. There's he no, did. Yeah. He got past Katie and turned the Jets on. Just couldn't get under the ball. Yeah, and Carson felt it after he released that ball. That was kind of on a line instead, you know, instead of having that, that nice arc that the receiver can run underneath. Second down, trips right, twins left. Been pretty much the same alignment this whole second half. Low snap. Tyler lets it go and again hit intended for Brown and just about a step or so in front of him. So that'll bring up fourth down and nine. And you're at the point of the game where you pretty much have to go for it. And as I say that, the punt team comes in. Is 
Zach Jones in to punt. Escudo back deep for Oxford. Nice kick, takes a bounce. Scudo's got it at the 43 over midfield. And he's out of bounds about the 45 yard line in Dragon territory. They're gonna call it the 46. And Oxford will take over first and 10. If you're the Dragons, you got to do whatever you can to obviously be swarming the ball. But you know, once the first guy makes contact, the second guy coming in and try to rake it out, punch it out, whatever you can do to try to get that ball back. Yeah. I know that's what's taught to do at every time, but it's 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 especially critical right now if you want to get back into this game anyway. A turnover would be huge. Wideouts left and right, I formation. Now it comes up, fullback comes up to a wing right. Ficaro, that's not, breaks it outside to the 30, to the 20, to the 15, and down about the 11 or the 12 for Sal Ficaro. I was just going to say, obviously Oxford's going to keep the ball on the ground, but but uh, you know, a 34-yard gain. Watch break her outside. Right? Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. Dragons just aren't getting off their blocks. No. And even after Corbin Smith was, you know, had him wrapped up, he still got another five yards. Yeah, Oxford will try to run the clock out. It'll be heavy dose of Vaccaro up the middle. In for the touchdown. Wow. Sal Vaccaro from 12 yards out puts the Wildcats up 47 to 20 with an extra point pending. By Jay Cady. Brody Moore is the holder. And Oxford's going to take a timeout before they attempt the extra point. So while they do, we will tell you filmmakers, be ready. The Wildwood Film Festival will be kicking off on Thursday, October 7th at the Orion TV stu ONTV studio located at 1349 Joslin Road. Teams will be given their requirements, which include a prop, location, and line of dialogue that is to be included in their film. You will have until 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 12th to submit the film. On Wednesday, the 13th, the films will be viewed and judged at 7 p.m. at the Oxford 7 Cinema in Oxford. Open to all ages, it costs $25 per team to enter, and three winners will be chosen for cash prizes. The contest benefits the Lake Orion High School Students Offering Support Program. To register, go to www.orionontv or call 248-393-1060. Kick is, ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 8.50 to go here in the fourth. It's now 48 to 20. Two plays, 36 yards, 16 seconds. Look at Vaccaro, just tr keep the legs churning. He stretches the ball. Boy. That's... Oh, boy. Yep. Yep, just crossed the plane. And his knee's not down yet. 
full extension. Somebody who wanted it. Yeah. Wanted. You know, let, let me exactly. ask. Let me read to this. You know, Oxford possessions. First possession, touchdown. Second possession, field goal attempt. No good. Hit the upright. Third possession, touchdown. Fourth possession, touchdown. Fifth. Their Oxford fifth possession, touchdown. Oxford sixth possession, touchdown. Kick return for a touchdown, and their next possession touchdown. They have scored every single drive with the exception of one. Yeah. And they've not just scored field goals, they've scored touchdowns. Yep. And one missed extra point. And, and coming from behind and having to throw the ball every down is not what offense coordinator Mike Powell likes to do. High end over end kick. Taken on There's the a one. seam. He's got a hole. Dorian Hill brings it out to the 18-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Dragons. Down four touchdowns. Connor McCartan's coming in to take over duties for Kyler Carson. Yeah, Connor, it's gotten a little bit of work the last couple weeks. First and 10 from their own 18. So Connor McCartan is in at quarterback. Fumble. Fumble and Oxford recovers. Oh my. Mitch Viviano on the fumble recovery. I don't, couldn't tell if that was, uh, it had to have been on the exchange. Roberson and Connor are talking about it. Whether Connor didn't get the ball in or Roberson didn't get a good handle on it. But that happens when you have a new quarterback in for his first snap. So Oxford is emptying their bench. You know what, Doug? But it shouldn't happen. You know, it shouldn't happen. Yes, I know that the seconds don't get as many reps, but boy, oh boy. It just, You've got to take advantage of the reps you get. Absolutely. And and just like, you know, the next man up, you got to be ready to go yep. when it's your time. So number 16... Dom Cassery, Cassassi, Cassassi is in at quarterback. Or is that number 46? Yeah, that's number 16. I don't know if that. Okay. And that happens when you're trying to make wholesale adjustments too. You well, lose the, track of the play the clock. Yep. So Cassis is a freshman quarterback. He's going to be around for a while, folks. Hands off. Vaccaro in down to the 15. It's interesting that he's still in the ball game. It is. You know? He's had a nice night offensively. He's coming out now. Number 22, Javon Pittman comes in at the running back spot. He's a senior. He splits out wide left. Yep, the timing and the tempo is certainly off, no question about it when you get the seconds in. And uh, you know, there's only so much time in a week to get to get reps in, right? Yeah, and so is. you're working on all sides both sides of the ball, special teams as well. Yeah. Trying to build a program and you know, trying to get as many reps in as possible, quality reps in as, as possible. And and as you know, Doug, those scout teams are so critical to the development of your football squad, right? Yes, absolutely. You want you want to get good looks on on all sides of the ball, and 
Um, that, that cure is made by Ben Fazzini. Yeah, you, you always try to get your second and your thirds. This is why we've always said Lake Orient carries this huge roster. But they also, you know, when you're in a situation like this, you can get those guys game repetitions. Fazzini cutting it outside, coming up field. Fazzini. Flag down about the 16 yard line. We have had a lot of penalties tonight, like you said. Trying to get the call from referee Wally Rose. He's had so much air time tonight, he's going to want an invitation to the banquet. <laughs> That'll back him up 10, make it third down and 13 from the 26. It's more than 13. Yeah, 20, wow. third and 20. Third and 20. Handoff around the right side, number four, Marco Vaccaro. So you take one out and you put another one in. Now we're getting wholesale changes. I think they're bringing Katie in for the field goal attempt. They are. It'll be a 40 yard attempt. Ball is down, kick is up, good kick. And it's good. 5.50 to go in the game. It is now 51 to 20 in favor of Oxford. As they used to say, who to thunk it? Well, you know what, Doug? Last three weeks, Lake Orion gave up 44 against North Farmington. Last week, 40 against South Philly and T, and now 51. Yeah. And so. Uh, On a team which the defense is supposed to be the strong suit. Yeah. And you know, we uh, were concerned about what the new offense was going to do. And uh, we've seen the last three weeks uh, give up this many points. And uh, certainly, as, as you know, it's very tough to win football games when, when you're giving up that many points. Oh, boy. So Stephen Brown and Dorian Hill drop deep. Katie's got it teed up on the 40. Referee Wally Rose blows his whistle. Katie approaches. High end over end kick. Coming down at the goal line for Brown. Looking for an opportunity to show that speed. Breaks a couple tackles. Gets over the 25 and is flattened. About the 27 or the 28 yard line. So 542 to go. Each team has two timeouts left. Ball's marked on the 27. And Connor McCartan stays in at quarterback. Nick Eaton is at the running back spot. Takes the handoff, gets over to 30, maybe out to the 31. Nick Eaton wearing number six. We'll try to set the Dragon lineup. Edwin Morris is in at one guard position.
Handoff around the right side. Number 27, Trey Pakmara the third. He's out to about the 32. It'll be third and they're calling it six for the Dragons. These are those next man up reps that these yep. are so critical. And up, oh, that was a fail, look at that. Given to Dorian Hill and he was about decapitated. And two flags came out in a hurry. That'll be a face mask. That'll be 15 yards in the first half. He was trying to cut it up field and his head was jerked back the other way or his helmet was jerked yeah. back and his head came with it. You know, Oxford's obviously up 51-20 right now, but that's the 11th, if my tally is right, that's the 11th penalty on Oxford. Yeah. 11 penalties and they're still up by 31. One wide out, double wing. Handoff, up the middle to Eaton. He's dropped after a gain of maybe a half yard, maybe no gain. You know, Oxford came into tonight playing Romeo, Adams, West Bloomfield. 3-0, and 3-0, 2-1. Oh, and oh, and yep. Adams won tonight, West Bloomfield won tonight, and I don't have a score of Romeo. So my, my point in saying all that is, while they are 0-3 oh coming into tonight, they played some really good football they teams. Have. They have. And, you know, I, I think you're seeing the result of, of, of not going down, oh, going 0-3 oh and, and, and giving up. They're, they're coming out and playing hard and playing fast, and uh, they're executing well. Pass is complete to number 14, Mike Jockwig. And I'll tell you what, McCartan showed a pretty good arm. Yeah. On the run. Jockwig got past the, 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 the cornerback there on the, on the little corner route and uh, got the separation he needed. A nice ball by McCartan. Dragon stay with the double wing. Single back. Handoff around this side. Cut inside. Dorian Hill, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. How about that? Three thirty-nine to go. And the second team showing a little spark. Absolutely. We're here to play, we're here to play, and we're here to put some points on the board. Jones on for the extra point. Ball's down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 3.39 to go in the game. It's now 51 to 27. The, get, the score was 14 nothing at halftime. How about that? <laughs> and it went by very fast. This second half is taking forever. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll let you know that today's game is copyrighted presentation of Lake Orion High School's Dragon Broadcasting Program and Orion Neighborhood Television. Last school year, the LOHS Broadcast Program was awarded the title of Best Overall Program in the Country. We brought you over 80 live sporting events, and we plan to match that again this year. Plus, you can catch our award-winning daily live newscast, LOAM. Tune in at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. I kind of look forward to when this game is put on YouTube to pull it up and just just watch the second half and the back and forth. It's been exciting. There's no question about that. A lot of big plays, but unfortunately for the green and white, not in their favor. That ball sat down nice at the three. It did. That's a live ball. And a pseudo 
out over the 20 to the 22 where Oxford will take over first and 10. Situation here, you know, it's a matter of getting the reps, getting as qual quality reps as you can, but also getting out of here healthy, you know? Yes. That's, that's a key moving forward. We're still, we're still still not even quite at the halfway part of the season. Yep. Four games in, plenty of football to play. Hopefully you get Joey Thede and Dan Babcock back next week. Try to set the Dragon Oxford, defense. Oxford short staff. They don't have everybody out there. Matt Costanzo is in that left cornerback. They're going to have to call a timeout. No one knows what's going on. Mike Jockwig is in at a safety position, and they do. They only had 10 guys on the field. So next Friday is Lake Orion West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield, new coaching staff, drop their opening game, and then they've come back and played very well the last couple weeks. Yeah, they've, they've got speed, they've got athletes, and, and, and they've got uh, a history of winning lately, you know, and so... Yes. Um, Defending state champion. Absolutely, and so they, they, they're prideful, and they want to continue to play like that, right? They lost, they lost their head coach, Ron Bellamy. Tyrese Grice is now the head coach there at West Bloomfield, and He's been there a while with that program, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it's going to be a challenge for this green and white to go against the other green and white. It is. So 3.33 to go. Oxford takes over first and 10 at the 22. Two wide out, single back in the backfield. Handoff. Number four. Ball's on the ground. Who's got it? They're saying Oxford recovered. The ball was down. There were, there were a lot of green shirts around it, just couldn't corral it in. It's second down and about five. Second at four, they're calling it. Ball's marked on the 29 as we're inside three minutes to go. Handoff up the middle, stopped in the backfield. See who the ball carrier was. Pazzini was the ball carrier, stopped by the middle of the Dragon defense. It's third down and five. They're giving Pazzini a loss of one. So it's third and five as we near the two minute mark. Looking at this, uh, Oxford's uh, results from last year, they had lost seven in a row dating back to last year until it looks like tonight. And they started off two and one last year and, and lost, yeah. lost four straight to end the season. And then in that strange season that it was, and uh, they started 0-3, but uh, that's a big win for their program tonight. It is. You know? I addressed that with Coach Line in a pregame. I said it was it was so crazy last year. You're taking over a program. You're, you're starting to get everything installed, and then you get shut down, and then you have to come back at it again. And he said, yeah, he says it was it was crazy. The, you know, the kids handled it the best they could, but it really helped them a lot to have a full off season and then go into this year with everything as you know as regular. You know, and they go, they go. Lake Orion's got West Bloomfield next week. Oxford's got Clarkston. Good luck with that. So, so it's third down and five. 
Throws incomplete. Looking at the run. Cassisi's pass incomplete. That'll be fourth and five. And I think this is Oxford's first punt of the night. Yes, it is, Doug. Yep. Stephen Brown goes deep for the Dragons. Boy, wouldn't a big punt return be something now? Trying to use as much clock as they can. Low line drive punt, and Brown's going to let it go down to the 35 to 33. And the Dragons will take over first and 10 with 97 seconds left to go. Down by Ryan Chisholm. So the Dragons come out. Seven out of nine possessions. Oxford scored, and I don't, don't even consider the touchdown return for a yeah. Yeah, as a possession. Yeah. Handoff around the right end. Got a seam going down the sideline. We talked about speed, number 26, Ray Payne. Takes it to the 21-yard line with a minute and a half left, and he showed some speed. Absolutely. Speed is, I mean, you can't teach speed. and no, uh, if you, you can't coach it either. No, you can't. So first and 10 from the 21. Handoff up the middle, number six, Nick Eaton. Down to near the 15. They'll give him five. It'll be second and five. Payne got a first down and we got a flag. This one's coming back. Looks like a hold on number 77, Edwin Morris. They called it on, which is Jake Lee, the kicker. That couldn't be right. He's not in. Did he call 15? I think he said 14. Michael. 14. Mike Jockwig. Mike Lockwig. Jockwig. So it's second down and 15 with a minute one to go. McCartan from the gun. Corner out, Looks corner close. out, got, got him. Corner, got him. Oh, and he dropped the ball. Oh my goodness, Mike Jockwig. It got up in his face. You now, usual receiver wants the ball right in his chest area. This got up in his face, and he just couldn't haul it in. Nice ball by McCartan. He saw what he liked. Yeah. And he, oh, he was wide open. Yes, he was. So third down and 15. Connor being rushed. He's going to go out of bounds at the 30. That'll bring up fourth down. They're calling that, yeah, it's fourth down. I guess they're calling that an incomplete pass. Fourth and nine from the 20. Double wing, wide out, split right. Connor, back, looking, got pressure. Gets out of it, goes to throw, got, got the receiver. Jack Wig and just, just got it on his back shoulder. 
McCartan did a great job to avoid to keep that play alive. He did. I don't know if that was deflected at all, but great job of keeping his, his composure, keeping his feet, and keeping his vision downfield. Yes. I, so they turn the ball over on downs with 30.5. And I think everyone's expecting Oxford to take a knee. There's a lot going on in this game tonight. A little bit of everything. Unfortunately for the Dragons, not as much scoring as they would have no. liked. Dragons getting some players in. And they take a knee. The last 20 seconds are going to run off. And the Oxford Wildcats come in and defeat the Lake Orion Dragons by the score of 51 to 27. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television. We'll be right back. Thank you and good evening. 